Greetings to you, wild things. Phil Kleiman here. I am pleased to once again present at your conference. I spent a bunch of hours on this presentation, going down a PowerPoint rabbit hole, coming back to the surface, pondering what my core messages should be. I ended up with a short presentation that will leave us a lot of time for discussion. The Chusa Grasslands is located in north central Illinois. A map of Nechusa grasslands, 4,000 acres. The preserve is 35 years old. The red are remnant woodlands, prairie, and wetlands. The preserve showing orange as remnant prairies and green as the many prairie plantings done over 35 years. I have been managing the Chusa grasslands for 27 years. I was a young man when I started. You may know of the blog I published for the Grassland Restoration Network. I am also involved with the Illinois Prescribed Fire Council and you have perhaps met me at one of our symposiums. You may know my colleagues, Cody Considine, Elizabeth Bach, Dee Hudson, are one of the many volunteer stewards and seasonal crew that have helped us get the job done. Some of our volunteer stewards. What strategies should we use for a particular invasive weed? How do you decide what works? Do you pull up a plant? Spot spray it? Ignore it. Our resources are limited. We need to be strategic and be open to experimentation. We need to share what we learn. In this presentation, I use bird's foot trefoil as a case study for questions of where and how to manage weeds. Bird's foot trefoil, BFT, is Lotus corniculatus is a challenge to manage. BFT is from the Eurasian and North African continents. It's a perennial legume, leaves of three, pretty yellow flowers. The seeds form in pods. The seeds have a long viability in the soil, likely a few decades. The plants can take a lot of abuse. They don't mind fire, but they do die when sprayed with various herbicides. This photo is from Massachusetts and is an example of how thick the plants can get. Some call BFT the bean from hell. This is one of our units, Big Jump Prairie we call it. This unit is about 350 acres. The shape of this unit is somewhat complex, a subdivision adjacent. The BFT is thick in much of that big blue block. This is BFT on this unit in a fallow field that was decades back a corn soy field that was planted with Timothy, brome grass, and bird's foot trefoil. I met a retired fellow from the Farm Service Agency who remembered his agency giving this seed to this landowner. They apparently planted, planted it heavy. Here the red overlay is the remnant habitat at this unit. A lot of those remnants are oak woods. The prairie remnant is the big square, and it is a mix of very degraded remnant to fair quality remnant. What should be our strategy for BFT for this unit? The big sprayer is for the fallow field. We often use 1% milestone herbicide. Milestone has a residual that lasts on the soil for a few months and kills emerging plants from seed. We don't use this on spot spraying, just boom spraying. These smaller sprayers are good for treating lanes or small patches and fallow fields. This photo shows that fallow field. On the left are sprayed BFT that are starting to wilt. We missed a thin line of bright yellow BFT plants. To the right, a fairly clean result from a previous year's spraying. So this fallow field will end up grass only for now. 
the next generation of stewards can decide to turn it into a diverse quarry restoration. For now, we have our hands full and need to keep some fields simple. In many places, we use backpack sprayers for spot treatment of BFT, walking tight transects back and forth across units looking for invasive weeds. During weed sweeps, we walk across perhaps a 30-acre prairie planting, like this crew is doing here years back. They are looking for sweet clover in this case, carrying size to cut sweet clover. When they get to the end of this planting, they shift over, turn around, and walk the other direction, back and forth, back and forth. We were sweeping for weeds in 1996, 2006, and will be in 2026. These small hand sprayers are in my truck all summer. One will have the broadleaf herbicide crossbow. I often also carry a spray bottle with basil bark brush herbicide sometimes a third bottle with glyphosate. These hand, this hand sprayer is a repurposed cleaning solution bottle. It has a pickup tube molded into the bottle so you can spray the entire contents without the pumping air problem. Here on the left is a large sprawling BFT and a nice prairie planting. On the right, a BFT plant is twisted up and sprayed. A few sprigs of BFT are not in the twist, but it likely died, and likely the prairie dock and other adjacent plants survived. Here is another unit on this 160-acre tract. On the left, you see tire tracks from a tractor herbicide sprayer when I applied herbicide to bird's foot to foil. This is a fallow field, not a pasture, not a prairie planting. It is brome grass and BFT and a few other plants. The spray will make it just grass easy to manage. On the right is a 20 acre prairie planting that was a corn soy field. It is chock full of diversity, having been planted with 150 species of prairie seed. Some birds with trefoil got in there, but it is a scattering of plants. We walk transects in this planting with a backpack of herbicide to spot spray. It is a lot of walking and a little bit of spraying. A map showing this unit, the prairie planting in the middle, surrounded by brum grass and a corn soy field. Mapping the occurrences of weeds is important to helping develop a management strategy, whether digital map or colored pencils on paper. I recommend having some fun by experimenting with various techniques. You don't have to produce a published paper, Experimenting and monitoring builds confidence in your strategies. Here's an example of testing a technique. I carry a hand sprayer for basal bark herbicide to spray on the bark of certain invasive brush I come upon during the summer, perhaps autumn olive or buckthorn, Siberian elm or honeysuckle. This is not a water solution, but a mineral oil solution of 20% broadleaf herbicide. One day I found a few BFT and figured the basal bark herbicide would kill the birds with trefoil. But how do I know for sure? So here is a big BFT I sprayed only in the middle with just a bit of basal bark oil, right where the plant emerges from the soil. I treated 50 plants. To really know if the BFT would die, I wanted to return the next year to the same 50. So I took some used flag stake wire, looped the end, attached those aluminum tags. The stake and tag are fireproof, so I plan to burn the unit. Then in May, it would be lush green, but short, statured, and my tags would stick above the prairie. But COVID came, and we did not burn this unit, and I was challenged to find about a dozen of these tags. This is one of them. All BFT plants found were dead. Collateral damage to adjacent plants seemed modest. You can see all the healthy prairie plants around this tag. Back to Bird's Foot Trefoil in another part of Nechusa, the old main units west of the headquarters. So here we see a more complicated pattern. B 
BFT on remnants that are good quality. BFT near our best remnant prairies. BFT in our restorations that are of good quality, in restorations of low quality, and in, in between quality. Big patches of BFT and little islands of BFT. Only a few of these occurrences are thick with birds with trefoil, and all can be handled with backpack sprayers. Success on these units are that no bird switcher foil plants set seed. Here we are zoomed out to the entire preserve, the red being the remnant habitats, the blue are BFT occurrences. If I overlay all the species of weed maps here, it would make you want to drink more coffee. Have we been successful in controlling bird's foot trefoil? Yes and no. We have kept the occurrences from spreading in places that a quarter century ago had a scattering of plants. We currently need to walk through those areas to look a few times each summer. And we often find a few plants in those areas. In places that were once thick with BFT, we find plenty of first year tiny BFT plants, even after about a quarter century of carefully trying to not allow adult plants to set seed. My bottom line on managing BFT and perhaps all weeds, map the occurrences to consider the landscape context, contain the spread, Go after the small outbreaks. Experiment and measure. Be a happy warrior. Weeding is fun. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Bill. Um, now I think we're going to continue taking some questions from the chat. Okay. So he asks, what's the best hand sprayer to use with basil bark oil herbicide? Yeah, I think I wrote a blog post on the Grassland Restoration Network comparing these. I recently bought the little Birchmeyer for about 40 some dollars. And that one seems to be working well, but the steel has a brand for 22. The steel brand is a $22, I think it's a quart sprayer, very nice. That seems to be working very well. So at the moment, I'd go with the steel because it's a good price and it works. Excellent, just waiting for more questions to come in. Okay. While people are saying that, I'll make more pitches here. So if you have stuff to share, maybe you'd like to write a blog for the Grassland Restoration Network. Um, what you do is you just email me and suggest an idea, and I will work to uh, help you turn it into a blog post that is searchable, is stored, and it's a good way to share ideas with people, the Grassland Restoration Network. So this next, shall I read that from Pete? He's There's saying, a couple more right above there if you want to start. So um, Kathy asks, any tips for eradicating crown vetch? Yeah, crown vetch. I like to use milestone on, on crown vetch, and it is tough. I think transline or milestone you want to use on that one. And uh, that, that's a tough plant. you got to spray, spray all of it. It can sometimes be thick. So uh, repeat it, probably spray it twice a year. To try and keep on it and you can get you can get a hold of it transline one percent or milestone one percent i like this next question maya asks what advice would you give to young restoration volunteers or stewards um get to know the plants get to know the people that are working there that have the experience hang out with them go for hikes um don't don't sweat it. Have fun with the work you're doing. Um, it's fun to be outside. It's fun to be doing weed management. Um, it's that, that kind of happy warrior attitude. Um, and just hang in there. 
hang out with others. Awesome. Um, Linda asks more about the surgical strike. I think that was what you linked to on the- um, Yeah, the Brian Walton wrote that blog post. I looked it up. Great. Um, yeah. Pete asks, I know you have done some experiments on killing honeysuckle stumps. If I recall, you had success using G4. What's the trick? Oh yeah, for sure. Garland 4 works very well. 20% solution. We used to use 17%. It also worked just fine. Um, works every time and you don't have to put it on the stump. You can just put it on the bark. We've also done numerous studies here, published papers, basil bark works on honeysuckle. You'll get 100% control. Again, GRN blog posts, there's several of them describing that. Awesome. Kevin asks, any experience with spraying BFT in early May when the first few rosettes come up? Hey, Kevin. We've always assumed that you want to see enough of the plant to get that root, you know? So, but people, we do start spraying in May, but I'd like to see several sprigs coming up, at least with the uh, foliar water applications. If you want to try that G4 trick, all you got to do is know where the root is at and, and just spray those, that little bit of emerging plant. Evan asks, and I sort of had this question too, were you tempted to kill everything in that seeded prairie and start over? It looked so thick in that field, the BFT. Uh, yeah, that one was a fallow field. So that one we did boom spray it. It was not a prairie planting. It was not a prairie restoration. It was just a, an old fallow, you know, let go field. Once in a, a few times in our history, we have re hit the reset button and put a planting back into uh, row crops to try and reset it. And sometimes going backwards is the best way to go forward. Interesting. Joan asks, um, do you have other major invasives to control? Yeah, we have the usual, you know, reed canary grass. Um, we spray with grass herbicide frequently. Um, Phragmites, we'll use uh, Roundup with the habitat. Um, uh, let's see, sweet clover. We've been going after sweet clover forever. Done very well with sweet clover. We uh, we dig the plants up. We pull them up. Uh, sometimes we spot spray them, but it's actually it seems faster to dig them when you can. Just pull, just put your spade near it, loosen the soil, pull the root out. Um, we mow. If you have a lot of sweet clover, we mow uh, right at end of flower right before they're ready to make a seed. And Man. others. Too. There's there's some others. <laughs> yeah. Amanda asks, um, Dickinson and Royer says BFT seeds are viable for 11 years. Have you seen evidence that they're viable, actually viable longer? No. I mean, I don't have the data. It, sure, someone's done a study, great. But I can just tell you that in areas that we've been spraying carefully for a quarter century, we still have BFT plants emerging and they're little tiny wisps of plants. Are they really coming from seed? You know what you're looking at. And people with sweet clover have also commented about how long it takes to eradicate sweet clover. So I, I think think in terms of decades of time is what it's gonna take you to eradicate some of these legumous weeds. So choose a strategy that fits the energy you actually have. Peter asks, do you find climate change is driving any specific invasives problems? I, I don't know. I couldn't tell. Sure. Um, James asks, what percent of milestone for BFT with a backpack sprayer? Uh, I, been, I believe it's 1%. And I see Jim Allwell said something. He had a number on here. But oh, yeah, half ounce milestone per four gallons of water. I think um, that's that's less than I'm using, but that probably works. Yeah, it's a it's one of those herbicides you don't need very much of it. Transline is like that too. Great. Barbara asks, any tips for cut leaf teasel? Oh, we've been spraying it with the uh, glyphosate habitat mix, and sometimes when we miss it, we cut the flower heads off and get rid of them. But I don't have much, I'm not the one to ask about teasel. We have very little of it. 
That's good. <laughs> um, Kelly asks, I worry about the residual effect of both Milestone and Transline. As you said, they are better for low quality areas. Any sense which one has a shorter residual time? Uh, I think Milestone has a longer one, Transline a shorter one. And if you're worried about residual, you you, you can try maybe the Garlon products. Um, have, have They have a very little residual, but I haven't been happy with the kill that they're doing. Maybe what you want to do is find a way to uh, apply it so that you get very little um, overspray. So maybe it's gathering up the plants and spot spraying them. Dale asks, um, we've been seeing gallium album invading the prairie near my house. Do you have some experience with this, which seems to be a relatively new invader for us? I'm sorry, I don't. No problem. Um, Jenny asks, in areas where you are doing spot spraying of BFT, how often do you spray in a year? Do you walk the full areas multiple times in a summer since it seems to bloom anywhere between about June 1st and August 1st? Hey, Jenny. Yeah, it takes a lot of hikes. I, I tell my crews that if you go through, if you sweep for weeds one time in a prairie planting, you, you might lose ground. If you do it twice, you'll gain ground. If you can sweep through there three times, you're really going to catch almost every plant. So we're trying to go two and three times through uh, areas that have these weeds. And we sweep all of our prairie plantings every year. And it, it takes a lot of walking to do that. Jim asks, what is the name of the repurposed industrial sprayer? Uh, repurposed industrial sprayer. Uh, which one was he referring to? Hmm. Maybe I'm, we'll find out. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, sorry. I'm just going down the question, like, okay. question after question. So I'm really just throwing them at you. <laughs> I'm, so fast, I, I, I'm having trouble reading them too. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, I think we maybe sort of addressed this. Jeff asked, experience with intensity grass specific herbicide, which I heard about yesterday for the first time. <laughs> Yeah, that's the one. I think that's the one we're using. And um, is it uh, clethodem is the active ingredient? And we like using those herbicides in reed canary grass areas because we can turn them into sedge meadows. It doesn't kill the forbs. Um, the, the downside is the reed canary grass roots don't necessarily die. You just, you just, set the plant way back but overall if you can go in there quickly and spray it's a good way to go but i encourage you to go to grassland restoration network because someone wrote a great blog comparing using roundup and then brian walters wrote one on or vice versa but anyways two of them on there um using roundup or the grass herbicide Okay, a little bit of a different question. Kathy asks, um, when Jerry Wilhelm and Laura Anker brought us out there in 2019 for their seminar, I was amazed at what a fantastic job you and your crew have done in such a huge area. What was your favorite habitat discovery? At, well, at Natusa, I love walking around that, that woods that we have at the end of Stone Barn Road. And uh, there's this ridge top with um, Oak trees overhanging in, beautiful prairie plants right on the top, little tiny plants that are fun to see, hypoxis hirsuta, and the, the, the little pussy toes, the, the three vein pussy toes, and the, and the oh, other wonderful uh, savanna plants that are up there. So that's Stone Barn Savannah. Look for the ridge tops. Cool. Um, Delaney asks, is there a better season to burn to control BFT? I know it generally likes fire. I'm wondering if spring burning hinders germination some. No, I, I doubt it. I, I doubt it. Maybe you could burn, maybe if you're burning late in the spring, you can get the, the, the cotyledons to die off, but I doubt if it's going to make much difference in your effort. So I, I would just burn as you would for, as you need to, and not worry about the BFT. You won't kill it with fire. Another question about BFT. I've heard, um, Amanda asks, I've heard that once seeds develop on BFT, it's too late to spray it. Thoughts? I sure don't like seeing the seeds. I tend to reach down, grab all I can, stick it in my pocket or in a bag, and then spray what's left. And then okay. I put it in the 
the kitchen garbage and make sure it's really gone. <laughs> yeah. Um, Therese asks, um, Bill, do you have any experience controlling Alicampane, Alec, Alec, sorry, Alicampane, I think is the common name, Inula Helenium. Thanks. I'm sorry, I don't. I'm, I just, I've never, I've never even heard of the plant. Me neither. Um, good to know. Uh, Kelly asks, I heard the Forest Preserve District of Cook County is using vast land and yeah, vast land instead of Garlon 3A, triclopyr with mixed with mid toxicity instead of high. Bill or anyone else have good experience with vast land too? Yeah, I haven't used that herbicide and uh, it's it'd be fun to see what the results are. And if anybody has experiments to share, uh, send them on to me and we'll post them on our blog site. Okay, just a couple more questions coming in. Um, Alan asks, any experience or ideas for controlling big blue stem if it begins to take over plantings? Bison. Nice. <laughs> Maybe try a grass herbicide in that growth period of, um, you know, that hot summer months. I, I haven't done that, but maybe you would think that would work. And then Durs asks about controlling invasive euonymus in an oak savanna. Uh, I sprayed very little of that and I sprayed it with uh, basil bark garlon four and it killed it. Okay, Brandon is now sending us questions from the event chat. So um, someone asks there, do you mow Phragmites and reed canary grasses to prevent reseeding in addition to herbicide? No, I think we'd just be getting stuck in the mud and I don't have a situation where mowing would be doable. Kelly's interested in renting your bison for a few weeks for uh, Lake County Forest Preserves. <laughs> yeah, maybe cows can do the job. Uh, King County Forest Preserve is using cows. You might see how that's going. Interesting. Um, I'm just making sure I'm not missing any other questions in the event chat. Um, I think that's wrapping up. That's wrapping up our questions. But um, if anyone has any more, this has been great so far. Yeah, the I see someone on bouncing bet. I use a special chemical for bouncing bet, saponaria, and I'm forgetting what it is. I'm sorry. If you email me, contact me, I'll look it up for you. You know, one of the things in my presentation I'm trying to show is that the strategies you have to think about, in some areas, you want to be really aggressive and use a boom sprayer because it's not a remnant, it's not a planting. In other places, you use a backpack. In some places, you carefully gather an individual plant together. So there's all these different strategies. There's not one thing. And the work is so hard to do and our resource so limited that you have to be careful what strategies you choose for which areas. Someone's asking about vinegar. I don't know anything about vinegar working. I, I, I doubt it. I, I wish it would. And then um, how big is the bison herd? About 100 animals. Yeah. And they like it came up earlier today. Um, what do you, when you have too many bison, where do they go? <laughs> we put the, we, we trade some and we give some and we sell some. So they, they leave the preserve and sometimes they're being eaten and sometimes they're populating another preserve. Yeah, there's another one about uh, Duchesnia. Sorry, never afraid <laughs> fall strawberry. You know my ad, my attitude about a plant if it's not native, if it's not if it's you know if it's a an alien plant I may spray it just because I don't want to learn later that I should have been spraying it years ago. So it depends on. So sometimes a new arrival will get uh, killed. So sort of along the vinegar, 
um, line. I've had clients mention using a mixture of vinegar, dish soap, and I think baking soda. Do you think, do you think that would work? <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I, I'm skeptical, but I'd love to see people do controlled studies. So it's the kind of thing where you probably want to have a university and maybe people have done that. It, I mean, those are pretty strong chemicals, it, dish soap and vinegar and baking soda. So who knows? It could work. Well, I'm, uh, I want to say thank you while I have the moment, Brandon and Katie, for running these talks. I'm sure it's been a little bit stressful, and you're about to be done. <laughs> thank you, Bill. Thank you, This Bill. is a really good way to be kind of tapering off. I like this question and answer session a lot. Um, we'll yeah, we'll talk a few okay. more at you while, while we have the time, if you don't mind. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Great. Um, yep. Um, yeah, Kelly asks more about success stories. Um, what invasives have you eradicated or at least managed to a comfortable level? Well, the sweet clover is a good one because a lot of people have sweet clover issues. When I first started, there were fields that were full of yellow and white sweet clover uh, so much that I have some early photos where um, it was as high as my tractor and just very thick. And we found that uh, mowing it, uh, for a while, we had a hay mower, which put the mower off to the side, and so it cuts it cuts that sweet clover, which is a hay product, and you're not running it over with your tire. So mowing did a good job for us, and we just kept pushing on it over and over, and and, and now, all these years later, it's it's you know there's not that many plants, considering how many acres we have. So I would say sweet clover, good success. Reed canary grass. We have good success if you can spray grass herbicide and return to the same area about every two, three years and do it again. We use, often use a boom sprayer on a little small tractor we have and put a light amount of grass herbicide out. Uh, yeah, and on the brush, we're doing well with the, the basil bark is working really well on the autumn olive and the honeysuckle and the buckthorn, but there's an awful lot of them and, and you still have to go to each plant. So the, the, the treatment is effective, but there's an awful lot of plants. So we use fire to keep brush in check. Keep putting in fire, almost annual fire in our woodlands. And that makes the shrubs have to keep re-sprouting, re-sprouting, and they can't set seed. It takes them a couple of years to set seed. So frequent fire is your friend. Uh, annual fire in oak woods is probably a good idea. Great. Um, ben asks about what sedges are you seeding in areas that control that control your weed canary grass? You know, we're not seeding much into them. We're, we're using that spray where there are some sedge component and the sedges come. So they're just increasing on their own. We do collect some sedges every year, but it's a pretty tiny amount for the amount of habitat we have. Pete asks, um, have you had any experience using Vanquish for stump treatments? I have uh, not been using it, but I hear very good results from it. And he's likely getting good results too. We do a lot of, I see James McGee saying about brush mowing. We do a ton of brush mowing here. Um, we mow brush with a uh, rubber track skid loader. We have a big big, huge brush mower we take to different sites. So a lot of brush mowing goes on and that's that's kind of working in, uh, with that prescribed fire. Lots of fire, brush mowing, spot treatment with basil bark. Canada thistle, someone says, we, we don't manage Canada thistle here and I know some do. My first year, we went along this one creek where there's a spotting of plants and we carefully sprayed them. And I, I, I gave up doing it and they never increased and then the only place I've had outbreaks is in CRP fields, where it's it's a really simple plant community of brome grass. And if you get Canada thistle in there, then just spray it with the Transline or the Milestone. We use a boom sprayer. 
So those are the chemicals I would choose if I was going to spot spray it, but I don't. And I, I feel it goes away if you have enough competition. Uh, Kenneth thistle is not a competitor. It is not in any of our 130 prairie plantings do we have a Kenneth thistle problem, not in any of them. So at least for our soils, not a problem. Someone says, now that glyphosate is considered a carcinogen, I'm not sure I consider it a carcinogen. I'm sort of dubious of that data and all that stuff that went on. I'm just not confident of what I was seeing there on the internet. Uh, but I would say with all herbicides, be smart with them, be clean with them. Don't get it all over yourself. Use good techniques. Um, I, I went to college for chemistry and I try and use good techniques in my handling of herbicides. Pete Jackson says he's having trouble killing honeysuckle with Vanquish at a site. Maybe try 20% Garlon 4. There was one more question a little bit further back about, um, and it was from Jenny, who says that she's sending all the, all the love to the Natusa fam from Texas and wondering how COVID has affected management. Hey, Jenny. Jenny was on the crew. Yes, uh, COVID was, has been a painful thing for us, but we have kept going. We were kind of stunned for about six weeks there. You know, the organization just like, what the heck? But now uh, we're carefully doing uh, stewardship and um, the crew still does their stewardship. They're, they're wearing masks, keeping distance. They have, we have various tricks and techniques. And it's all about, you know, being outside is good. When you get inside, be really careful. I'm very tempted to let that sentiment of being outside is good be sort of the the closing remark um, for Wild Things 2021. Um, so thank you so much, Bill, for being with us this afternoon um, yeah. and landing and letting in that great sentiment and being willing to answer all of these questions from everybody. This was fantastic.